Okay, so um, good morning to everyone. So uh, this will be a continuation on the housing management on the swine production. So this is a video lecture on 140. So um, for the housing management and waste management, I've discussed uh, on the housing management, the materials that you can use and then the floor space requirement so those are the topics that I've discussed and then dun sa waste management I discuss uh, yung mga parang hierarchy on waste disposal yung source reduction mga gadon yung mga recycle so here uh, I'm just going to discuss a little bit on the floor plan na tinatawag so um, hindi natin i-discuss extensively yung floor plan ng mga housing kung ano yung measurement, mga ganun. Kasi, um, hindi naman tayo yung gagawa nun. Yung mga, in, ma, yung mga um, engineer naman. Pero, uh, we need to discuss pa rin para uh, meron tayong idea kung ano yung parang, paano yung itsura ng isang floor plan. Paano yung, kung sakali man na ikaw yung magpapatayo, may idea ka na kung ano yung uh, measurement yung gagawin. So first, um, let's discuss yung uh, floor plan or a design for a breeding barn na tinatawag with a 50 uh, kapa pig capacity. So, itong pig capacity as uh, alam naman natin, breeding barn. So, meron dyan yung um, nandito yung mga boar at saka saw natin that is used for breeding. So, ganito yung floor plan niya. So, this is like an aerial view. So, uh, imagine natin na, uh, na tinitignan natin yung uh, housing ng mga um, pigs uh, sa taas. Aerial view. So, um, ganito yan. Um, you have here yung parang um, staircase kung saan dito ka uh, dito ka lalabas, pwede dito ka lalabas or dito. Pwede dito. So um, you have here yung parang um, anong tawag nito, yung hallway kung saan sa side niya nandito yung mga um, mga cages. So here we have yung mga feeding trough and then dito na yung makalagay yung mga breeders natin for a 50 capacity na uh, breeding sow. Then, dito naman, dito mo ilalagay, pwede mong ilagay yung mga boar mo. And then, dito, pwede rin dito yung mga other breeding uh, sow, pwede mong ilagay dito. So, ganito yung itsura niya. Pwede ganito yung itsura niya. Then, you have dito sa part na to, dito, nandito yung kanal open canal na tinatawag para may proper waste disposal ka pa rin. And then, uh, yung kabuoan ng housing nasa 21 meters by 8.20 meters. So, ganun uh, yung lawak ng housing. So, itong um, itong feeding pen, ay, no, itong pen na to, itong breeding pen na to, uh, may um, May lawak na 0.65. So, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65. So, ganun yung um, lawak niya. So, ganito yung aerial view. And then, ganito naman dun sa pag tinitignan natin sa side or sa front. Front and back pala. Front and back ng breeding house. So, um, it is recommended na yung housing natin uh, for any of the farm, breeding, uh, breeding man, farrowing man na housing is itong uh, monitor type na, na roofing. So, it is recommended na ganito para maganda yung, uh, maganda yung uh, ventilation niya. So, pwede papasok dito yung uh, air at saka dito rin lalabas yung air pwede. So, ganito yung itsura, pwede ganito kung balak nyo magpatayo ng um, um, farm, pig farm, 
Then, nagde-design kayo ng pwedeng mag-design yung engineer ng breeding barn na tinatawag. Pwedeng ganito. So, dito sa front, dito ka, uh, dito ka papasok. May parang, ano yan, may elevation pa rin na 0.90 dito sa part na to. 0.90 meters. So, uh, dito, dito ka papasok and then dun, dito yung parang gate niya. Then, yung mismong ano, from yung sa roofing hanggang dun sa floor, nasa 3.40. Now, yung height nung roofing hanggang dun sa pinakataas na height niya is 2.50. With a combined uh, meters na 6.80 meters. So, from the tip of the roofing hanggang dun sa, dito sa, ele, dito sa flooring niya, meron siyang 6.80 meters. So, yun yung uh, recommended. So, by the way, this is um, fra from the Philippine Recommends, from the OSP Picard. So, ganito yung parang recommended na size ng um, ano natin, mga uh, pig houses natin. Then, ito naman yung sa ano na, ito na yung sa mismong breeding pen, di ba? Pinakita ko kanina yung um, floor plan. So, yun, nandun yung mga pens, yung mga breeding pen. So, pwede ganito yung breeding pen mo. So, dito, itong part na to, ito yung tinatawag, uh, it, dito yung feeding trow, dito siya kakain. So, nandito yung ulo ng baboy, then nandito yung body niya. So, yung height ng breeding pen nasa 1 meter. 1 meter yung height niya. Then, dito sa part na to, hanggang dito, hanggang dito, dito sa part na to, nasa 0.90 and then 0.80 dito sa part na to and then 0.80 dito sa part na to. So, ganun yung um, measurement ng breeding pen na tinatawag. Then, dito sa part na to, nandito na yung parang um, kulungan niya, yung gate niya. And then, nandito yung open canal kung saan, kung tatae man yung baboy, then pupunta dito. Then, as you can see, uh, dapat yung flooring, it is may sloping yan. Hindi pwede, hindi pwede yung patag kasi pag patag, yung, mga, uh, yung urine at saka yung waste ng baboy, hindi makakapunta dito sa kanal. So, mas maganda na yung flooring mo is sloping. So yan, yan yung parang recommended by the USDP card on the measurement ng breeding pen. Then for the materials, pwede yung mga um, steel, pwede yun, mga GI pipe na tinatawag for itong pag-construct nito. Then for mga farrowing house naman, um, medyo mas, mas maliit siya. Uh, compared doon sa um, compared doon sa breeding house kasi dito nasa 15 meters lang by 7.20 meters so yun now dito pupunta ka dito sloping yung staircase niya doon sa outside and then nandito yung hallway so um, pansin nyo na yung mga pens it is wider compared doon sa Uh, mga breeding na pens natin. Since, these are farrowing pen na. So, kailangan mas um, mas malawak yung pen nila. So, ganito yung design niya. Pareho lang nung sa height. Pareho lang yung height niya doon sa um, breeding house. Pareho rin sila nung uh, roofing which is yung uh, monitor type na roofing. Then, Itong elevation niya nasa 0.90 from the ground until yung first na flooring uh, 0.90. So yun, basta pareho lang sila ng design. Uh, pareho lang sila nung um, height at saka yung roofing. Yung pagkakaiba lang nila doon sa breeding house is uh, mas uh, makitid to, mas malawak yung sa breeding house. So ito yung parang uh, crate a uh, far farrowing pen or farrowing crate na tinatawag. So, yung height niya from dito hanggang doon dito sa part na to ng uh, crate nasa 1.60.
Then, yung length niya nasa 2.20. So, yung 2.20 meters, I think uh, that is enough uh, for yung, sa, yung mga saw natin na malalaki. Yung 2.20 meters, okay na yun. Kasya na yung um, buntis na saw natin. And then, yung height niya na 1.60, okay na rin yan. Um, mostly, uh, kakasya naman yung uh, saw na pag ganyan. So, yun. Ganito yung itsura niya. Pwede ganito yung measurement. So, kung magpapalagay man kayo ng farrowing crate, farrowing pen, pwede nyong, um, i-ano to, pwede nyong, um, Pwede nyong uh, mabalin nyong atula din. Then, yung materials niya nasa ito, round bar lang na, tina, na yung material, materi, material niya dito sa part na to. Then, pwede nyong mga steel naman dito. So, yun yung um, itsura ng farrowing crate. Then, for the nursery bar na tinatawag, nasa 15 to 7 point 15 by 7.20 meters pareho sila nung uh, ano pareho sila nung um, farrowing barn then ganun rin yung um itsura ganun rin yung size then for the growing barn naman hindi na siya pen eh itong ano na to it is more i pen pen pa rin pero it will not house yung individual na na animal so sa growing barn nandun na yung mga wind na piglets natin so pwede mong i-house yung 1 liter dito then another liter dito another liter dito so malawak na then um yung ano niya is 15 meters by 720 meters pa rin yung lawak Yung pagkakaiba lang talaga is doon sa pen na ilalagay mo doon sa uh, housing mo. Doon ka doon magkakaiba. So pero kahit anuman uh, anuman 'yan, kahit growing barn man 'yan, kahit um, farrowing barn, breeding barn, uh, halos magkakapareho sila ng size, magkakapareho rin sila ng uh, roofing type, magkakapareho sila ng uh, height ng house. So, dito lang talaga sa um, pens ka magkakaiba. So, yun. Ganito rin yung design niya. 6.80 pa rin yung height. And then, ito yung detail for the growing pen now. So, ito yung hallway. So, meron siyang uh, 3 meters by 3 meters yung ano niya. Yung, anong tawag nito? Yung size niya for the growing pen. Now, dito ka papasok, and then, ito yung feeding trough mo. At ito yung mga, um, ano nila, um, sizes for the feeding trough. Pwede rin na ano to, pwedeng iisa, hindi na nagdi-divide, so, pwedeng 3.5 plus 3.3 plus 0.3 plus 0.3 plus 0.3 plus 0.3 yung length na niya, yun yung susundin ninyo. Pwede, Pero, pwede rin na i-divide yan. So, yung isang division, 0.35 meters, yung isa, 0.30, yung isa, 0.30, then yung isa, 0.30, 0 0.30. So, yung 0.30 meters na yan, uh, kasha na yung ulo ng baboy. Then, may adequate space rin na uh, para makakain siya ng maayos. Now, itong uh, 3 meters by 3 meters na uh, pen, ng mga growing pen natin, meron siya nito, um, kung, uh, meron siya nito, plain cement. So, cement type yan. Hindi yan yung uh, slatted na flooring na. Yung flooring niya, uh, cemento na. Then, uh, hindi dapat na flat yung um, flooring. So, um, Alam, alam niyan ng mga engineer natin yung proper elevation, proper slope ng um, pens natin. So, dapat sloping itong pens natin para yung mga tae nila pupunta dito and then 
to facilitate na, na rin yung easier cleaning kasi pag sloping then um, lahat ng mga tae uh, pwede mong ilag uh, pwedeng pumunta lahat dito lalong lalo na if you're using yung power washer so winawash mo lang ng ganun then um, dahil sloping yun pupunta at pupunta dito sa kanal pero pag flat kasi to hindi mahihirapan ka and at the same time magbi-build up yung mga water, yung urine at saka feces doon sa uh, dito sa cage nila kasi hindi um, hindi sloping. So yun. So and then dito sa likod ng pen mo, meron kang kanal kung saan doon pupunta lahat ng manure at saka urine mo. So ganun yung uh, itsura ng isang growing pen. Uh, now we also have itong finishing barn. So, uh, kamukha rin nung sa growing barn with a 15 meter by 7.20 meter na, uh, na area. Uh, and then, ganito rin yung itsura. Pareho lang sila nung other barns. Then, ganito yung uh, ano, um, finishing pen. So, um, mas malawak. Ay hindi, uh, pareho lang sila nung sa growing pen, nung lawak. So, nasa uh, 3 meters by 3 meters rin siya. Then, um, yung isang difference is sa feeding trough. So, sa growing pen, yung recommended ng Picard is na divide yan by 0.30 meters, 0.30 meters. Dito, uh, isang feeding trough na lang to. Then, doon na lang uh, kakain yung mga, um, yung mga finishing na baboy. So, yung paglalagay ng finishing na baboy, uh, yung, yung guide mo is yung um, floor space requirement nila. So, iba-iba yung floor space requirement, requirement nila. So, if you have a 3 meter by uh, 3 meter na kulungan, then... Um, Limited lang yung ilalagay mo na uh, na finishing na baboy. So, you base it on the floor space requirement para hindi mag-overcrowding. So, uh, for example, you have a floor space requirement ng isang finishing na, uh, na baboy is just for the sake of computation nasa 0.50 meter square. So, 0.50. So, Pag ganun, pag 3 by 3 yung 3 meter square yung um, kulungan mo, then 0.50 yung floor space requirement niya, then pwede kang maglagay ng um, anim na baboy on this, feed, uh, in, oh, on this finishing pen. So, yun. So, kailangan na you take note of the floor space requirement. So, na sabi ko na rin naman or... Uh, na ipakita ko naman yung floor space requirement nila. So, you take note of that and then um, i-measure mo yung size ng pen mo. Then, after you measure yung size ng pen mo and then nakuha mo yung floor space requirement, then makukompute mo kung ilan yung baboy na pwede mong ilagay dito para hindi sila mag-overcrowd. So, yon So, with that, uh, ano nga ba yung pagkakaiba ng slotted versus yung concrete na flooring. Ano yung mga advantage, disadvantage nila. So, sa slatted flooring, ganito yung itsura. May mga uh, holes. So, ang ano nito, it is easy to wash and dry. Kasi may mga holes siya kung saan uh, doon pupunta yung mga urine, yung mga tae ng mga baboy. Then, it achieves best separation between pigs and feces. Kasi nga, um, slotted siya, may holes may holes siya so itong flooring na to uh, this is uh, dito pupunta or easier na makakalabas or o oh, easier yung washing at saka easier yung separation ng urine at saka feces kasi slotted na then uh, quick drying since uh, hindi siya yung concrete flooring na lahat ng surface area pwedeng ano uh, pwedeng uh, mabasa 
dito sa slotted floor because of the holes, uh, kukunti lang yung surface area na pwedeng mabasa. And at the same time, usually kasi itong mga slotted floor, it is made of plastic. plastic. Kas, kaya, uh, easier or quick yung drying. Then, impermeable, since this is made of plastic, mostly are made of plastic, plastic na tinatawag. Then, yung disadvantage niya, it is more expensive than most flooring. Kasi, itong uh, slotted flooring na to, hindi lang iisa as one. Yung bibilhin mo is, uh, I think, one, pwede kang bumili ng 1 by 1 meters, ganun. Or, nasa 0.5 by 0.5 meters, depende dun sa pagbibilhan mo. So, uh, medyo expensive rin compared kung... Um, concrete flooring yung gagawin mo. And then, it can lead to soil bruising and abrasion on knees in piglets. So, yun, pwede ma-injure ma yung mga piglets mo and then, uh, it is more damaging when wet. Then, we also have what we call as partly slatted flooring na tinatawag. Now, this partly slatted flooring na tinatawag, um, it provides a dedicated solid lying area so dito solid yan concrete concrete yan and dito sa part na to nandito yung slatted na flooring so better drainage in furrowing pens than yung solid flooring kasi nga meron siya nitong slatted flooring so yung uh, drainage ng water and at the same time yung removal ng uh, manure ng mga tae ng baboy uh, mas easier kasi nga merong part doon sa pen na islated na meron itong mga butas-butas kung saan dito pwedeng uh, pumasok mga, yung mga urine into the canal. Then, uh, yung disadvantage niya it is itong solid area na to can, be, can quickly become messy. So, as makikita naman dito sa picture, if ventilation is not optimal or yung airflow is incorrect, as pigs will dung in the wrong area. So, yun. Ma magiging messy yung ano. Kasi, pag yung ventilation incorrect, uh, mas gusto ng mga pigs na tumae dito sa part na to. Compare, uh, uh, compare dito sa part na to. And then, pigs tends to have more lesions than those house on solid floors, but fewer than those on fully slatted floor. Since partly slatted lang siya, Uh, meron rin pa rin yung mga bruising na tinatawag yung mga injury na magaganap pero lesser na compared dun sa fully slatted floor then uh, meron rin yung slatted floor na concrete na tinatawag hindi plastic so it is cheaper than yung plastic slats then often used for a heavier pigs as they have good weight uh, bearing properties So, mas maganda daw dun sa mga mas mabibigat na mga baboy, itong concrete na to. Then, uh, one of its disadvantage, it is slower to dry than plastic slats. So, uh, mas parang susceptible or mas higher yung percentage na pamumu, uh, pamamahayan ng mga bacteria. Lalong-lalo na if slow drying. Then, yung disadvantage rin niya, it is partially absorbent. Hindi tulad ng plastic na impermeable, ito partially absorbent, meaning uh, it can absorb yung mga urine, yung mga water dito. So, it will lead to a risk of uh, residue. Then, uh, itong concrete slotted flooring na to, it can be eaten away by liquid feed and acid since it is Uh, partially permeable. So, yung mga papasok na mga urine, mga um, water, uh, pwede siyang eaten away. So, mag-corrode. Pwede uh, masira itong mga concrete flo slotted flooring natin. Then, finisher pigs tends to develop more uh, bursitis on concrete slots than those housed on solid floors. So, yun yung mga disadvantage. And then, sa solid concrete flooring naman, it is predominantly used with straw, lalong-lalong na doon sa mga um, piglets natin uh, para uh, 
meron silang bedding. So, this will act as also as a brooding uh, area for the uh, piglets natin. So, you can use itong straw, uh, straw for bedding. Kasi pag sa slatted na flooring, um, mawawala rin yung mga straw. Ma mawawala rin lang yung mga straw since uh, slatted flooring have holes in it kung saan pwede doon uh, papasok yung mga straw, yung mga rice straw natin. So, uh, optional lang, uh, option mo lang talaga itong rice straw as bedding if you have uh, solid concrete flooring. Then, uh, yung disadvantage for a solid concrete flooring, it, uh, yung drainage can be a problem if the slopes are not correct. So, yun. Kailangan talaga na sloping yung um, flooring mo. Kasi pag flat yan, hindi hindi makakalabas yung water. So, walang drainage na magaganap. Then, uh, solid concrete flooring can lead to knee abrasions in suckling piglets. And then, poorly laid concrete can become slippery and or rough. So, pag hindi daw maganda yung pagkakagawa ng concrete flooring, can be slippery and rough that may lead to injuries. Then, concrete must be laid in appropriate, appropriate weather conditions. And then, insulations, construction, and laying all influence qua, uh, quality and durability of the concrete flooring. And then, uh, sa concrete flooring kasi, it has fewer issues with lameness than seen in pig's house on slatted floor. So, with that, uh, we can determine now the number of pens and stalls required in a pig unit. So, um, ano nga ba yung mga kailangan natin, require, uh, given na kailangan natin to determine the number of pens and stalls uh, that is required in a pig unit. So, in the following example, the number of different pens required in a 14 sow herd where 8 week weaning is practiced will be determined. So, meaning, we have 14 sow herd. So, 14 yung baboy natin na mga pangganakan. Then, yung pre-practice natin na winning period is 8 weeks. So, yun. So, uh, first, we need to determine the following interval and number of following per year. So, dapat ma-determine natin yung average winning to conception interval, yung gestation niya, yung suckling period, and then yung following interval. So, um, yung average winning to conception interval, uh, yung average niya is 20 days. So, given na yan. Yung gestation, alam na, naman natin, 114 days. Yung suckling period, di ba sinabi kanina na yung winning, uh, yung, winning yung suckling to winning uh, period is 8 weeks. So, yung uh, 7 days in a week, so 7 times 8, 56 days yung suckling period. From the time na nagsasak nila, day 1, until na mawin sila, so 56 days yon. And then, yung following interval natin, nasa 190 days. So, with that, the number of followings per sow, uh, per sow per year, nasa uh, yung year natin is 365 days, divided by 190. So, saan natin nakuha itong 190? Dito. 20 plus 114 plus 56, that is, uh, there is a following interval of 190 days. So, 365 days per year divided by 190 days na following interval, magkakaroon ka ngayon ng 1.9 na following. So, meaning nito, yung isang saw, uh, pwedeng mag-farrow ng 1.9 times or kung iraround natin yung isang saw sa isang taon pwedeng mag or pwedeng manganak ng dalawang beses. So, yun. So, yun yung first step. We need to determine the farrowing interval and the number of farrowings per year para malaman natin kung ilan yung mga mga ipapanganak ng mga saws natin. Then, number 2, determine the number of farrowing pens. Since alam naman natin yung ano na, yung farrowing interval, then, uh, yung service is to determine the number of farrowing pens. 
So the piglets remain in the following pen until 12 weeks of age. So uh, doon muna sila yung mga piglets natin. So um, we compute uh, yung ano niya, yung ilang days na nandoon yung um, ilang days yung na nandoon na na occupy yung or occupy uh, occupied yung um, farrowing pen so before farrowing bakit natin ilalagay itong before farrowing na 7 days kasi uh, yun yung recommended di ba pag uh, one week before farrowing ilalagay mo na siya sa farrowing pen so meron siyang 7 days na nandoon na yung um, sow natin and then pag nanganak na yung suckling period ng mga bab, ng mga piglet na sa 56 days. So, yun yung ano. So, kasi na occupy pa rin ng mga um, ng mga piglets natin yung farrowing pen. Nagre-remain pa rin sila doon for 56 56 days na tinatawag. Then um rearing of winners nasa mga 28 days. And then, yung cleaning and sanitation of pen, nasa mga 7 days. So, uh, after, na, after na wala nang nag-occupy doon sa farrowing pen, paglaan ka ng 7 days for cleaning and sanitation. Then, doon mo ulit ilalagay yung next na magfa-farrow. So, yung occupation days, days of occupation per cycle is nasa 98 days. So, yun. So, yun yung mga dapat nating i-compute or i-determine sa step number 2. Now, um, with that, ito na yung ano, ito na yung computation. So, one farrowing pen can be used for 365 days and natin kinuha yung number of days per year divided by doon sa occupation per cycle natin 98 days. Kasi yun yung na-compute natin na days kung saan na-occupy ng isang saw at saka yung mga piglets yung isang farrowing pen. So, uh, with that, it is equal to 3.7 farrowing pens. Uh, 3.7 yan. So, 365 divided by 98, nasa uh, 3.7 farrowing, farrowings per year. So, meaning, yung isang pen, it can uh, accommodate uh, 3.7 farrowing pens. So, uh, pwedeng at least uh, 3 na farrowing so, or more than uh, at least 3 na farrowing and then at most 4 na farrowings yung pwede niyang i-accommodate per year itong isang farrowing pen. So meaning um, tatlo or apat na saw yung pwedeng manganak doon sa isang farrowing pen per year. Now Doon sa 14 saw herd natin with an average of 1.9 farrowing, so meaning yung 14 na saw natin, uh, each of them can farrow at least 1.9 per saw per year. So, yung computation natin now is 14 times 1.9, so kasi uh, yun yung farrowing, number of farrowing nila for a 14 saw herd natin, divided by uh, ilan yung pwedeng ma-occupy or ilang farrowings yung pwedeng maganap doon sa isang pen which is 3.7 that is equal to 7 farrowing pens. So meaning yung 14 saw herd natin yung kailangan niya na farrowing pens is nasa 7. So yun. So I hope you are following. So ganun yung pag-compute natin ng farrowing pens kung ilan yung farrowing pens na kailangan na ng isang 14 saw herd. So, if you are not yet, uh, hindi pa masyadong naintindihan, so you can go back on this video lecture para maintindihan. So, with that, uh, please go over itong um, lecture natin for today since ito rin yung kasama to sa um, Long exam ninyo. So, please go over itong computation. Go over yung mga uh, mga diniscuss ko for this video lecture. So, with that, uh, thank you for listening.